Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'll be repairing this Google Pixel 4a 5G. It's got a dead display that has been internally cracked from a small drop. The outer glass is in perfect condition, but that small damage to the internal layers of the screen has rendered this phone unusable. Having repaired the regular Google Pixel 4, I can say it wasn't the easiest to repair, as the screen was the last thing to come out. It was also glued in stronger than it needed to be, so strong in fact, the display's layers separated when I attempted to remove it. The Pixel 4a is Google's mid-range option. The question is, how does it hold up in terms of repairability? With previous Pixel models, I found the A series to be a lot easier to work on. Let's see if that trend followed through with the Pixel 4a 5G. I purchased this one online for under $100. Looking at the condition of the parcel it arrived in, it barely made it. Included with the phone was its original box, paperwork, a SIM eject tool, and USB-C adapter. But no charger, probably because they kept it, as their new phone likely didn't come with one. But considering the price, I'm not worried, as the cheapest used one on eBay is listed at $550. $450 more than what I paid. Plugging it in. It makes a charging sound, but no image displays. So it's time we opened it up. To do that, I'll heat up the display using my heat plate, which will soften the adhesive holding on the display. Like the Pixel 3a, this phone also opens from the front. Using my suction cup and one plastic pick, I was able to slice through the adhesive effortlessly. Seriously, it's less strong than the Pixel 4 and other phones like the newer iPhone models. Once the display is loose, it can be lifted up and away from the phone, revealing the one cable connecting it to the phone's motherboard. It's covered by a piece of tape and a plastic cover. Both need to be removed before the display's flex cable can be detached. I don't know many phones with a screen removal process that's that easy. Google really did a good job. At this point, you could reattach the new screen and be on your way. But as my phone is still powered on and no way of shutting it down, I'm wanting to disconnect the battery first before attaching the new screen, as simply misaligning the cable when plugging it in could short out and damage the phone further. Alternatively, you could wait until the phone went flat, but as time was a constraint, I didn't take this approach. Google has chosen to use Torx screws to attach the back panel to the mid-frame. After all nine screws and the SIM tray are removed, the back can be unclipped from the phone. However, it's still attached by two short cables. To unplug those, I'll first need to detach the device's heatsink, which also doubles as a large flex cable retaining bracket. After the battery is unplugged, I can finally detach the back panel. Just like that, we've removed the back and gained access to the battery, cameras, headphone jack, motherboard, and charging port, all of which are modular components. In terms of a modern smartphone from a massive tech company, this one's internals is quite accessible. But it doesn't just stop there. Google has provided some pull tab strips to help remove the battery. These are located on the display side and are hidden under some copper tape. They are similar to the ones Apple uses for their batteries. While they do aid removal, they're oddly not present on the Pixel 6 smartphones that I took apart recently. As this phone is only six months old according to the previous owner, I see no need to replace the battery. This means I can start reassembling the phone. Attaching the flex cables for the LED flash and fingerprint reader. After which, the battery can be plugged in and secured down with the main bracket. Google's Pixel smartphones are very different internally to most other Android phones. In fact, it kind of reminds me of the internals of an iPhone. The screws inside also vary in length, so you'll need to keep track of them. Something unusual to see with Android phones, but common to the Pixel. I'll clip the back panel back into place before securing it with its nine Torx screws. Before attaching the new display, I'll need to clean off the residual adhesive left on the midframe. This is the most important step, as applying over the old adhesive will cause the screen not to sit flush and be more likely to lift up and cause gaps around its perimeter. The new OLED display cost me 157 Australian dollars. Observing it and the damaged one we removed, the screens used on this phone appear to be only hard OLED displays. 
This means the internal layers are not flexible like the ones found in soft OLED screens, which would explain why it broke so easily. Hard OLED displays are cheaper to make, and given this is a mid-range phone, it's not strange to see a hard OLED display used. Nevertheless, I'll get its flex cable attached. The plug is quite recessed, which makes connecting the cable a little challenging. But with it installed, the plastic retaining bracket and tape can be reapplied. Before gluing on the display, it's a good practice to test out the phone and the new display, because you wouldn't want to attach the screen only to have to try and get it up if something isn't working right or you forgot to connect a flex cable. With everything tested and verified working correctly, I'll remove the plastic protective film from the back of the display and apply some adhesive. As the bezels are very tiny, I'll be using liquid adhesive, specifically E8000. You can buy replacement adhesive strips, but they are hard to come by. Liquid adhesive isn't ideal for a water resistant phone, but this one isn't, so that's not an issue. What's most important is to ensure correct application of the adhesive to make sure the screen is attached properly. A good, solid bead of adhesive needs to be applied. After aligning the display with the frame, everything needs to be held in place using rubber bands. This adhesive takes hours to dry, and removing the rubber bands too early can cause the screen not to be glued down properly and start lifting up from the frame. That's the mistake most quick repair shops make. They use this type of glue and don't allow it to dry, so the customer ends up with a screen that's not attached. After having left mine overnight, I can remove the rubber bands and clean off any glue that seeped out the edges. After which, the phone has been fully reassembled. The only thing left to do is remove the plastic protective film. And we're done. So this is it, a repaired Google Pixel 4a 5G. Total costs including the phone and new display total 255 Australian dollars. That's $295 cheaper than the cheapest Pixel 4a on eBay at the present time. So this has turned out to be a very good deal. In terms of repairability, this is about as good as it gets from Google. If you can get away with the specs of the Pixel A line, I don't really see the need for the regular Pixel smartphones. They're harder to fix, like a headphone jack, and cost more. I believe the Pixel A line is the best phones Google sells. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.